Welcome to St. Stephen United Methodist Church. Glad you're here with us. I'm not sure what time it is because I tried to reset that clock back there and since I touched it, it stopped running all together. So it's, <laughs> it's still quarter till according to the clock back there. We're starting early. Anyway, um, glad you all are here. Hope you enjoy our worship this morning. Um, there's still work to be done here in the sanctuary. The job is not complete. We still need carpet and kneelers and a few other things done before we can say it's finished. But I did want us to be able to enjoy our new air conditioner and, and worship in the sanctuary again. And the fact that I've got somebody in the back row fanning themselves tells me I need to turn that air down a little bit more. Um, I hope everybody's comfortable. But uh, anyway, glad y'all are here. And those of you who may be watching on YouTube or Facebook, we're glad you're with us. We want you to feel a part of our family and a part of this service. And I uh, want to remind you that if you have not yet given us your email address, please do so. We're not going to market you. We just want to send you a copy of the bulletin, and that way you'll have lyrics to the hymns that we're singing. You'll have the words to any readings that we may be doing, whether it's our statement of faith or communion, liturgy, or whatever. We want you to be able to participate and feel like you're part of our service, whether you're here with us or whether you're at home in your living room. So get us your email address. Um, in two Sundays, we're going to have an all-musical service, um, a camp meeting sing-along, if you will. So if you have favorite songs that you would like to sing, you'll find this little sheet in your bulletin. Write down the songs that you would like to have considered for that service, and we will do our best to make sure that we get your favorites included in that service. Uh, let's see. This morning, or this week, we're celebrating birthdays for Bethany and Brandon Lowe. And also Sherry Clive this week. So since we've got a birthday, let's uh, see if we can get a, a happy birthday going. <laughs> Don't come. 
Let us know you're not feeling well. We'll pray for you. If you're not going to wear a mask, that's fine, but please make sure that you are following the six-foot social distance, distancing guidelines. Um, we just want to take care of each other and make sure that we're not, in our effort to exert our own personal rights, not stepping on somebody else's. We want you to sing. We want you to enjoy worship. And we don't want you to have to be afraid to be here. So that means that we have to follow some rules and to distance from each other. But, uh, but we are relaxing the standard a little bit. And uh, we want, wanted y'all to know about that. Um, we're also going to be, I hope, hopefully this afternoon, choosing some carpet for the room and uh, some things like that. So. We're making good progress on the modernization of our, our sanctuary. I think that is all the, oh, and don't forget the Musk Ministry Jar. Musk does a wonderful job of feel, feeding those in need and helping people who are in need. And so we want to conti continue contributing to them. If you have spare change or any money you would like to donate to Musk, drop it in the jar back there. Or you can also include some, some amount of it with your offering checks and just put it on the designation line so we know how much goes to must. Thank you all very much, and I hope you enjoy our service. Good morning. Will you join me as you're able in our opening hymn, Immortal Invisibles, number 103 in the
morning as we prepare our minds and hearts for prayer, we want to mention those who are on our prayer request list. Carolyn Short, Shelma Huffstetler, John and Carol Fuller, Cindy Franklin, Norris Jones, who had a, I believe, successful procedure this week to help him with his AFib. April Butler. Margaret Hughes, it's good to see you back with us this morning. Marlo Keith, we want to continue praying for the people in Ukraine and the people of Russia and all of those who are involved in the violence and warfare going on in Europe. Also, the families of school shooting victims and the victims of violence, no matter where it's taken place in our country. Gene Kibler, Graham Sykes, Anne-Marie and Dave, Scott McAfee, Wendy Tedder, Norris Jones, Sarah Polk, Floyd Polk, Victor Blackstone, Larry Cooper, Willie Neal Kane, Becky Sago, Margaret Simpson, Caroline, John Reagan, Ann Clackham, Phyllis, Barbara Casey, Camilla Munoz. While I don't see it on here, we want to keep John Dickerson in our prayers as well. Um, John hasn't been with us for a while as he's dealing with health issues, so we want to make sure that we're keeping him in our prayers as a great servant of this church. Does anybody have anything else that they want to add to our prayer list? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What was her first name? Her name was Faye Baker. That was your aunt? That's her name, Faye Baker. Well, let's pray for Becky and her family and the loss of her aunt, Faye Baker, as well. Her husband's name is Steve. Steve? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you open our minds and hearts and refresh our memories so that we may remember to give thanks every day for all of the wonderful things that you do in our lives, in our lives personally, in the life of our church, and in the life of the community around us. We thank you for these blessings, and we know that without the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be able to experience the joy that comes with these blessings. We hold up all of these people who we have named who are struggling with illness or injury or who need emotional support and also those who may be dealing with mental illness. We know that you want us to be whole, complete children of God. So we claim your healing and ask that you extend your healing hand and make those whole who need your touch. 
We ask that you lend us courage and faith and wisdom as we go about our days and go about our weeks that we may keep our focus on you and on the gift of your Son. We pray for all of those people who have been the victims or the families of victims of violence in our country and in our world. We're grateful for the fact that this world will be made, remade without that violence. But in the meantime, we ask you to comfort those who suffer under this great burden of violence in our land. We ask that you guide our leaders, the leaders of the church, the leaders of our local community, and the leaders of our nation. That you open all of our eyes to the needs around us and grant us wisdom that we may make decisions and choices. that are pleasing in your sight. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we read our statement of faith. You'll find it in the bulletin. You'll we'll also find it on page 881 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Join me as we read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen.
Thank you. That was very pretty. This morning, our second scripture reading comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 15 through 28. Colossians 1, 15 through 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood on his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am com completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body that is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he who we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Word of God for the people of God. So, unless you were paying real close attention, closer than I was, you'd be surprised at what that long section of scripture is about. Colossae was a city about a hundred miles north of Ephesus in Asia Minor. The churches in that area had not been started by Paul. They were started by another disciple. Paul had never been there. But he had been asked to help and he was trying to help the new churches in that area become established and to stay on the right track. There's a little bit of a hint in the beginning of that in verse 15 and 16. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven 
and on earth were created. It had been reported to Paul that many of the people in the new churches in the area around Colossae were looking to the stars for their guidance. They were mixing their faith in Jesus with their old habits and study of astrology. Now according to the information that I could find, there was no real evidence that they were trying to deify the stars or the planets, merely that they were seeking guidance for their lives through the practice of astrology mixed in with their newfound belief in Jesus. find it interesting that astrology still has quite the following today. In fact, according to the information, more and more young people, or younger people, what are known as millennials, generation Xers, and those coming after really like following astrology and seeking guidance through the stars and through the astrological rules. And over the years, in modern times, it has been quite popular. Some of the people that you will have heard of who follow astrology are people like Shirley MacLaine, Angelina Jolie, Kendall Jenner, Princess Di, and the one that caught me by surprise, Albert Einstein. I'd have thought he was a little too smart for that, but um, apparently not. And it is a little bit ironic. While historically the Christian church abhors the practice of astrology, the stars actually played a role in one of the greatest moments in history. Because there's that group of wise men that followed a star to the birthplace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's right there in the Gospels. So what does that mean? Is astrology good or is it bad? I'm not sure I have a clear answer to that. I'm not sure that astrology in and of itself is either good or bad. But I do know this. When we seek answers to life, Anywhere other than through Scripture and the Holy Spirit, we're off track. Our answers should be found in Scripture. Our answers should be found in prayer. Our answers should be found in meditation on the life of Jesus. Not how the stars are moving through the sky. One reason that I think many people, including young people, really like astrology is because there's no accountability in it. They seek their guidance from the movement of the stars, the stars aren't going to tell them when they're committing sin. 
The stars are not going to call them out when they're guilty of disobeying the Lord. The stars are not going to cause them to be ashamed of themselves when they're not living Christian lives. No accountability. I couldn't find any legitimate surveys or, or studies, but I think we might all be surprised to find out just how many people sitting in the pews of our churches across this nation look up their horoscope every day in the newspaper. How many of them are going to psychics and mediums looking for guidance in their lives rather than turning to Christ. We actually, most of us, practice maybe not astrology, but various superstitions without even thinking about it. Anybody ever hear a knocking on the wood? How about this one? Throw salt over your shoulder? I found it interesting where that one comes from in Da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper. Judas is portrayed as having spilt the salt on the table. And that's where the idea of the spilt salt is bad luck and you need to throw a pinch over your shoulder ward off the evil spirits and the bad luck that Judas started by spilling the salt. Now, I don't know where Da Vinci came up with that. I didn't find anything about Judas spilling salt in the scriptures, but who am I to say? Avoiding black cats. Don't walk under ladders. And the practice of staying at home on Friday the 13th because bad things are going to happen to you. Now most of us don't take that stuff seriously, but when was the last time any of y'all walked under a ladder? I bet every one of you have walked around a ladder at some point or another. These things are not evil in and of themselves. You're not going to be possessed by an evil demon because you walked under a ladder. But there is a problem with this stuff. It's a very subtle distraction from where our attention should really be. Where should we be seeking guidance for our lives? Where should we be seeking protection? Where should we be seeking healing? By knocking on wood. By looking at the position of the stars. Where does our salvation and our restoration come from? It comes from Christ. Our scripture says very clearly, he is the head of the body of the church. He is the firstborn of all creation. Everything was made through him and for him. So why do we give so much of our attention to things other than him? Now reading from Psalms, it says, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right 
and speak the truth from their heart. Now, how do we learn how to do what is right? How do we learn how to speak the truth? Do we get it from the stars? Do we get it from superstition? Do we get it from the psycho, 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 <laughs> the psychic, the psycho psychic? I call superstitions a subtle distraction because they are a waste of our time. They're also a waste of our efforts. And they are a lazy way of avoiding personal accountability. The psychic wants your money. They're not going to tell you how full of sin your life is. They're going to tell you where you're going to meet Mr. or Mrs. Wright. Or Mr. or Mrs. Wrong, whatever. These things may not be evil in and of themselves, but they corrupt our souls in tiny little steps. Step after step after step after step. In a way that we don't notice. See, Satan doesn't want us to notice that he's working in our lives. He doesn't want us to notice that he's trying to corrupt us. He doesn't want us to notice that he's stealing our attention away from the Lord. He doesn't want us to realize any of that. Here's an example of how that tiny little steps of corruption work. Last fall, Kim and I bought a used pop-up camper. And we checked it out. The electronics all worked and the air conditioner worked and everything looked to be in pretty decent shape considering the age of the camper. So we bought it, got it, got it for a really good price and took it home. It wasn't until one of the clamps that holds the roof to the body pulled apart that we realized the camper had some water damage. It had leaked. So as I started taking pieces of trim off, trying to find the damage and where the water was coming from, it became very clear what had happened. A small area, the caulk, the sealant, had been pulled apart or had just worn away from age. A little bit of water, just a little bit of water got under that piece of trim. But it got to the wood that the frame of the roof was built out of. And as that wood got wetter and wetter, it began to swell. And it began to rot. And where it swelled, the seams, which were really tight together when it was built, started to pull apart. So the more water that got to it, the more damage that was done. The more damage that was done, the more water got to it. But it happened slowly over a period of a long time. We didn't even notice it when we bought the camper. In places, the wood got so soft that there was a real risk that the system that lifts the roof up when you're setting the camper up was going to fail. This is the type of corruption that happens to Christians if we don't have a dedicated way of growing in our relationship with God. Little steps. Just a little bit of water. A little bit of rot. A little bit of corruption. And it grows so slowly that we don't even notice that we're pulling away from God. We spend time with horoscopes or 
superstitions, or the Atlanta Braves, guilty. Time that could be devoted to spreading the gospel, reading scripture, talking to Jesus, helping others, growing in our relationship with God. We develop a little chink in the armor of God. Very slowly, the little chink becomes a hole. And then the hole becomes a door. And then the door becomes a cavernous gateway. If left unchecked or uncorrected, we forget that God is our provider. We forget that God is the source of our well-being. We forget that God is our protector, our healer. We forget that Jesus is our salvation and our Lord. One day we wake up and realize that our whole world is in a shambles. Everything's falling apart around us. And we're surprised. And we wonder why God let this happen to us. But the whole time it was us that let the tiny little leak grow and grow and grow. It was us that allowed our commitment to God to become an afterthought. Something that we only did on Sunday mornings or something we only did when there was nothing else better to do. This is a, a really important lesson for all of us to learn and to be reminded of over and over and over again. Because for real Christians, Satan doesn't come and break down the front door and, and cause a home invasion. He knows the frontal assault won't work on real Christians. But he hasn't given up on us. He's still there. He still wants us. And he's patient. So he waits. And he watches. For those tiny little leaks. And he's always there watching. And he waits for that moment when we're not paying attention. And the slow corruption in our lives begins. Now there is good news in all of that. Satan's always there. But Satan can't hide from God. And Jesus always knows what Satan is up to. If we have spent any time at all trying to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tap us on the shoulder. And if that doesn't work, the Holy Spirit will knock us upside the head. Because God loves us. And he doesn't want to see Satan find his way back into our life. The leak and the damage can be stopped, but it can only be stopped with our Lord's help. It can only be stopped when we make God our priority instead of the stars or the braves. How many of you have kids or 
grandkids or even great grandkids. They're on travel teams. They're out playing baseball this morning or soccer or they're at football practice. What happened? We didn't play games and practice on Sunday when I was a child. If the coach had ever even thought about calling a practice on a Sunday, he'd have been fired. Now, not only are the kids out there playing, but they're taking the whole family with them. It's a slow, slow corruption. Distraction is dangerous. Losing our focus is a dangerous game to play, and it's a hard lesson to learn. And all of us get distracted from time to time. But it's so much easier if we just stay focused on Christ. Y'all have all heard the sound of the saying, I probably one of Ben Franklin's, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's so much easier just to Keep Jesus as the priority, as the number one focus in our lives, than it is to try to restore that focus after we've let Satan come in and cheek away at our commitment. And there's joy in staying focused on Christ. You know, one of my old mentors for quite some time, every morning after I said my morning prayer, I had to write a list of things I was grateful for. The reason I had to do that is because I had a really hard time being grateful for anything. But as time went by, my struggle changed and I actually learned how wonderful it is to focus on God's blessings rather than on the world's problems. They're like a song Kim and I were listening to on the way to church this morning. I can spend an hour listing the things that are wrong where I can spend the entire day listing the way God has blessed my life. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, sing it. There's peace in focusing on Christ. There's wisdom in focusing on Christ. There's courage and contentment that comes from staying the course. Paul talks a lot about staying the course. Our scripture says, He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. Not second place, not honorable mention, first place. He needs to be number one, not for his benefit, for ours. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on heaven or in earth, or by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen? Amen.
closing hymn this morning is Shine Jesus Shine.